Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to talk about one of the important and interesting topics of Terraform that is Terraform state locking. Now what is this Terraform state locking? So we are going to implement this Terraform state locking with the help of DynamoDB in this particular video. So we'll go through the concept of what is Terraform state locking and at the same time we'll try to do some hands-on on it. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So first of all, uh, in from the previous videos, we have understood that we first write the Terraform configuration files, right? then from that terraform configuration files we initialize them right after initializing we plan them we and lastly we apply those changes right and with that up apply what actually happens is the terraform.tf state file gets created right and this terraform.tf state file is something that keeps the track of your resources, right? And in the just previous video where we implemented the remote state, what we actually did is we stored this particular terraform.tf state file in our S3 bucket, which is our remote backend, right? So that was something that we studied till now. Now, I would like to add few things. Okay, so let's go to the dashboard. Now over here you can see that a developer has applied the changes and the changes have been updated in this particular terraform.tf state file. Now, while my developer 1 is making changes, if my developer 2 comes, which belongs to the same team, okay, this developer 2 comes and tries to make some changes that is apply the changes to the infrastructure. Now these two people are simultaneously trying to update this terraform.tf state. Now in the local when we were making use of a local backend then in that case this lock state locking is something that is implemented by default but now our terraform.tf state file is in the s3 bucket now how to prevent it right both the developers if simultaneously apply both of them will try to make changes simultaneously to the terraform.tf state which is not what we want right at the same time only one developer can make changes to the Terraform state so that conflict is avoided, right? So in order to avoid that conflict, like developer 1 is trying to make changes, developer 2 trying to make changes, over here developer 3 also is there, he also is trying to make the changes right here, right? So all of them are trying to make the changes to the single terraform.tf state file, which is not the best practice. It is going to create the conflicts, right? So in order to avoid these conflicts, we have the concept of terraform state locking. Simple, it is applied by default in case of local backend. But now we are working with a remote backend right so for that we need to configure the state locking with the help of DynamoDB in case of an S3 so let's go and try to implement it so first of all before actually trying to make changes to our configuration files what I'll do is I'll try to make some change I'll try to create the DynamoDB table first so this is my DynamoDB dashboard you can see that I'll just show you over here I have already configured this terraform block for the remote backend of s3 wherein I have mentioned the bucket name as s3 uh, as my s3 bucket whatever and this is something that I have already created right here okay so this is the bucket 
which I have already created. Now I want to create DynamoDB table, right? So I'll just create a DynamoDB table with the name as DynamoDB only. Okay. And within the partition key, I'll be mentioning it as lock ID. And you should always consider lock ID only for working with Terraform state locking. We require this partition key only. Okay. And now I'll just create the table. Now you can see that it's creating. I'll just refresh it and it's active. So I'll go to the Terraform configuration file. And within the backend block where we have mentioned the bucket name, the key that is the path for my terraform.tf state file and the region, I will just try to add the dynamo db table right here. Okay. And the value for it will be dynamo db. Okay. And I'll just save this. Now, what I have done is I have also created one more same just the replica of the previous project okay which is same now why I have done this I have done this just to demonstrate okay so the name of this particular folder is terraform state locking and the other one is just terraform state so why I have done is why I have done these changes is because I want to show you how actually the developers are prevented from simultaneous changes to the terraform.tf state file. So how this actually happens is something that we will be practically implementing it right here. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just try to initialize my Terraform directory. It's initializing all the required plugins right here. Now the initialization is completed. Now let's try to plan it so that we get an overview of what all changes are actually going to happen. So you must have observed over here that when I executed this particular command terraform plan it shows acquiring state lock and in the end it says releasing the state lock are you getting it so this is something that is important okay so with terraform plan also it is acquiring the state lock and after it has completed its work it is releasing the lock so with this concept of state locking we can avoid the conflicts right now what i'll do is i'll just show you something i will be implementing terraform apply command Now it has acquired the state lock. Okay. I'll just keep it as it is. And now what I'll do is I'll just open this particular uh, other, another folder. Okay. And now if I try to just plan it. You can see over here that it gives me an error now why does it give me the error is because in this other folder the lock is been still acquired over here because I haven't yet 
because the com the apply command is not yet completely executed because it is in the pending state so still the lock has been acquired right now if i try to make changes through another developer it won't allow me to make those changes right so in this way we can prevent the conflicts with the help of state locking and over here we have made use of dynamo db so let's try to say yes over here okay now it will start provisioning the resources on my aws cloud let's wait for the total completion of this particular apply command and now you can see that application has been done now what i'll do is i'll try to implement plan over here now let's see whether it shows us an error again or will it actually give us the result now you can see that with plan it shows that no changes see so now we can collaboratively work and at the same time no one can make changes to your terraform.tf state so this is the power of state locking and in this way we can implement the dynamo db table for our state locking so hope you found this video useful and if you really found this video useful do mention it in the comment and tell me that how much is this important and how nicely you understood it so give the feedback in the comments and um, thank you so much for listening to me and hope you found this useful so thank you so much and have a nice day